Hello and welcome to B and D and my story of dressing and cross dressing and going out and just being like this. <laughs> now, as I left in the last one, I told my daughter, and if any of you are even thinking, she's almost fourteen, so. And she has a friend at school who thinks they are in the wrong body and therefore she knows someone and that she's fine with them. So that's why I thought telling her first would be an easier task than telling the person who was meant to be my partner. And I will clarify that statement. A number of years ago, just as the C item that affected everyone happened, um, the person who was meant to be my partner had to go back to look after her mother, who had decided that she was just going to go to bed and not get up. So she did that. She went to bed and she never got up. and. My partner went and looked after her 24 hours a day, seven days a week, never came home. And I was expected to go up and get the shopping and do anything that required to be done. But even when I went up, there was no arms going around us. There was no kissing me and there was no holding me. There was no physically even touching my arm and thanking me and, or anything and that went on for the whole of the lockdowns and everything. Coming close to the end of the lockdowns I, our mother got worse and she got really worse <laughs> and she ended up um, having to go into hospital but she didn't come back to live here she stayed in her mother's house even though she didn't have to. Um, I was constantly asking her to come back and I was constantly telling her that she didn't need to be there and she didn't need to be alone when Amma is as ill as how she was and we all could see who seen her knew what would be happening and we knew at some point that something would happen that would be upsetting. And the thing comes is that it got to that point and she died in hospital. And of course my partner was upset about it as you would be. And I was expected to support her but yet she expected me to hold her in comfort her, but I didn't get comforted back. And everything she just didn't leave the house because she hadn't left the house for two years then she wasn't very happy about leaving the house and even though she was there and she had no income to buy anything with I still had to fully support foods and everything like that and yet she wouldn't come out the house and come back here she then decided that she was just going to live in the house because she thought she could hear her mother talking to her and her mother was immensely bossy and it just got to a bit where she virtually refused to come back. She kept saying that she was going to come back. She kept making days that I'll come back on Tuesday and I'll stay a couple of days and then it would come to Tuesday and she would find some excuse each and every time. She came back once in the last year, one day. She didn't show me any affection. She didn't come near me. She went upstairs and said she had stuff to sort out um, because physically all of her clothes were still here and she wanted some stuff. And I did the cooking. I took it the food but she wouldn't come down even though I said and I'm going you know um why aren't could just come down and then the next day she wanted to go back to our mass because she said oh I've got a phone call coming and I'm going 
you don't have to be at your mars to have a phone call come in. It doesn't matter where you are, it's on the phone. And she didn't come back. And she went back home and technically within the last thousand days then she hadn't come back and she'd only been there once and I had had no affection whatsoever which didn't help with how my mind started acting and this is one of the things which um, pushed me over the edge a bit that I was feeling immensely lonely and technically abandoned and I am I'm I find this hard to do because I I just get immensely emotional and I have to stop myself when I know I'm really close to just bursting into tears of how depressed I was just on that one factor and what pushed me was a number of factors altogether. Um, so I came back and brought my daughter back and I was dressed in my red velvet dress with leather, black leather trousers with my shoes with the orange laces which you would have seen in the thing um i had just got the red dress so you don't think you've seen you haven't seen any videos because i got my the red dress in helensburg when we went to helensburg and done and done fries and done not done done barton i'll get to the duns eventually um and i bought um, a mickey a black mickey, mickey dress with long sleeves which was very warm which was just as well because it's bloody freezing and I wear that to keep warm so I drove back and I knew how the reaction was going to be when she seen me like this and I told my daughter exactly how she was going to react and uh, we I, we both got out the car when we got there and we took in a daughter's clothes and she's at the door staring and she said I thought you were a woman and I was just about to kill you <laughs> because the thing comes is that she said that if I ever find a, another woman then she'll throw her down the stairs so and she said I had to take a double take and I didn't realise it was you until you got closer and I looked closely and I could see it was you. So if that's not saying that on that day that my makeup was really good then I don't know what is. That she didn't recognise me straight away even though I got out the car and there was nobody else in the car. Um, I went in and I sat down on the settee and she technically started with me and this is what I expected how could you do this to me how could you let the neighbour see you like that everything was around her and not around how I was feeling and why I had done this she virtually did nothing but uh, shout at me and I just sat quietly and the only person who voiced up and said what difference does it make was my daughter and she's going how can he do that to me how could he and it's for me um, it was very painful that she didn't understand even though I had said I was lonely and unhappy and miserable and she knew what I how I was thinking and everything and she knew it was difficult for me uh, from November time that she just didn't understand why I was dressing like this and having makeup on and my wig and she said you've even got a handbag 
oh my god and she was just all her and none of it was why why and she shouted at me and I just sat there quietly I sat there quietly feeling immensely depressed and miserable that she couldn't see how hurt I was and and how upset I was becoming that she was doing this and I knew she was going to do this and I was really nervous to even dress like this and I even thought that I would just drop my daughter off at the corner and she could just take the bags that she had around by herself and I would just go home but I thought at some point she is going to find out and if I don't tell her soon then it may be even worse so it took her a while to calm more down. After my daughter had physically talked to her and tried to put her right, she then came and sat beside me and then she stopped shouting. And when she looked at me and how I was, she then came out of being aggressive towards me and she started then she touched my arm and that was the first time she had touched me for so long and i told her i told you that i was unhappy and i was stressed and you know what's been going on i've had the pressure of her as well as the pressure of me and the problems that we've had financially for both of us and both the houses and everything and she didn't understand until my daughter had physically yelled at her to a point and cried which hurt me even more that that but she went to, when she went away that's when she sat down and she calmed down and I said that I was dressing like this and the reason why I was dressing like this and then she just said oh right and I don't remember everything that went as words but she said oh, look how you're sitting and I was sitting with my legs together at an, and my feet at an angle you know the Princess Diana sit method and I was sitting quietly and with my hands on my knees in the proper and she's going why <laughs> she was still a bit on the puzzled and thingy side and I said I'm tired I need to go home now I need to I haven't had anything to eat and I'm and then she said, yeah, okay. And she brought up all the negative things. So you're now dating boys and you're now sleep up. I'm going, no, I'm not. I haven't kissed a boy. I haven't done, I haven't done any of that. And she's going, um, you're just dressing. I'm going, yes, just dressing this way. Nothing else. And I, she then just hugged me, which was once again the first time she should bloody well touch me for yeah, ages technically it is years and then I came back home now you might think that's the end of that story it was immensely stressful for me and I knew it would be I knew how she would act I knew how she would talk to me and how aggressive that she would be towards me so I wasn't or shouldn't have been surprised with her actions and what she was going on about because everything was always about her and why aren't you holding me you know I'm upset can't you say yeah I'm upset why aren't you holding me you expect me to do it to you but then I don't get it back <sighs> after about an hour of me being back home and I was sitting um, I took my black leggings off and I was just sitting in my red velvet dress that's like three inches above my knee and if you sit down it rises up and 
But she phoned me and then she was nicer to me on the phone and she I think she understood a little more after time of letting her brain just accept a bit and she still kept saying she was going to come and then because we then got to a weekend and my daughter comes and stays with me. Well, it was a weekday when she stays with me and a weekend she goes back to her ma's. But it was getting to school time so she was going back to school so she was coming back here and I have to go and pick up her things. I went to pick up her things and I was dressed as the male, me. Um, she still got told me to come in and while... Well, and then she handed me and she said, I have these clothes that might fit you. Um, I'll have a look and see if there's anything else you don't need to buy. And she handed me a bag with clothes and that she thought would fit me because I had told her. And she still kept saying, uh, I'm going to come, I'll come down. And, and once again, it didn't happen straight away uh, but she was now more accepting that we can you will dress like this when we go away and I said very likely because I didn't know if I, she would accept me to dress like this and go out so I'm going very likely I, I'll need to dress like this so she more said okay we we can just all go out together and I'm going yeah so she stopped being nasty towards towards D she was now being nice towards D and she was now came and she cuddled but it wasn't me she was cuddling she said this is for D D's my sister more and I'm going, well, cuddle is better than anything that you've given me any time in the last. So, everything is immensely complex, but she found some makeup and perfume and stuff that she didn't want, um, stuff that our ma had, and physically, weirdly enough, a number of our ma's clothes that she had that she hadn't worn for ages were my size so they are actually fairly expensive items they are good name type things so um they are a little older but I can work with that so it came down to that we've just had and whenever this goes whenever I might put this up Today is technically Charles's coronation day and I know that by the time I ever put this up it will be nowhere near that now. But three days ago she came back for the first time and spent time here and she didn't spend time upstairs but I was dressed like Dee and she treated me more like a sister and held and cuddled me and put her you know and that was just different that she was touching me that she never ran her hand down my arm she never showed me affection at all and now she because I'm now dressed like this she has now shown me a little more attention but still it's it's not enough attention because she only stayed a couple of days and still I'm doing all the cooking one because I'm very good I'm very good at cooking make someone a really good wife because I'm really good at cooking but and I'm I showed uh, the clothes that I had I sh showed her the dresses I 
dress differently and and one night when I was going to bed she undressed me and put me into my nightdress and touched me and that was shocking it's very hard to after so long that she I don't know if she found me more attractive that I was the woman and and she liked the touch of the material but she was more attentive to us that she has ever been for years not just up to Covid times but even before that and so it's it's immensely complicated but it seems that she now accepts but she hates me even saying oh well I, if I don't get more attention I'm going to go and find a boyfriend and she's going you're not finding them all just just take it that and I'm going no don't be ridiculous um, no one wants to take me out even dressed as deep they may whistle but no one no no <laughs> I can't see that but this is a long video but this was a complicated video this was almost the hardest person to tell about how I was dressing and things like that so it's not always easy to tell some people and it's not easy for them to understand straight away so with that please like comment share subscribe i'll see you on the next video